In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. I'm really glad to be here. Even though it's only 9.15 in the morning, I'm still really glad to be here because I think we're going to have a good Mass. We know that God is always present at the Eucharist, so He's doing His part, so we have to be sure and do ours by opening up our hearts and letting Him show us His mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest Saint Padre Pio a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Add nothing to his words, lest he reprove you and you will be exposed as a deceiver. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Put falsehood and lying far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Provide me only with the food I need, lest being full I deny you, saying, Who is the Lord? Or being in want, I steal and profane the name of my God. The word of the Lord. Our response is, your word, O Lord, is a lamp at my feet. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp at my feet. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your word, O Lord, endures forever. It is as firm as the heavens. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. From every evil way, I withhold my feet, that I may keep your words. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Through your precepts, I gain discernment. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Falsehood I hate and abhor. Your law I love. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet.
Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, I have to admit, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're going to give it a try. I would like, um, where are the eighth graders? So you are here. Okay, good. Um, This is the question. We just heard the gospel, right? And I tried to read it nice and loud and slowly so you would get it. So eighth graders... I want you to help the fifth graders by telling them what it's really about. Did you get it? Did you get did you hear it? Raise your hand if you heard it. Only a few, huh? I'm not even going to ask what the rest of you were doing. Okay, those few who heard it, give me just like a a thumbnail, uh, maybe one or two sentences that you could share with the fifth grade about what, what's going on in the gospel. Who can do that? Really? Not even like two sentences? Should we start with the fifth graders? Yeah, here we go. What's going on in the gospel? But you're going to have to, maybe you should stand up and you're going to have to speak up there or never going to hear you. So I'm going to just repeat what you tell me so that they can get it, okay? Um, so they're going to be healing. But he doesn't, he, like, he gives them, like, some rules, doesn't he? Do you remember that part? Bring nothing. That's strict. What do you think about that? Could you do that? Could you like, if Jesus said, okay, I want you to go and tell people about the good news. Don't take anything with you. We probably wouldn't take a walking stick to begin with, right? Does anybody have one even? So that would be out. But in those days, if you're going to be walking from village to village, a walking stick would be really helpful. For one thing, it makes the walking easier. And for another thing, what happens if a dog comes up and starts chasing you, right? Then the walking stick's going to come in really handy. The things that he tells them not to bring, they're all things that they really would find very helpful. So I don't know if that's true for you, but that would be one thing that I would think, well, that seems, that seems kind of odd. That seems almost like it's too strict. It's too harsh. I wonder what Jesus, why would he even go there? Why, did he, why would he say that kind of thing? Or do we, just, do we just accept it as it is and say, well, Jesus said it, so that must be true. I mean, how do you feel about that? 
If he told you that, how would you feel? Excited? I think probably not. I think maybe, maybe a little scared or maybe a little worried, like, well, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Where am I going to stay? Those would be all, those would be questions I would have. It'd be like, what if I, does that mean I just have to like to sleep under a tree at night and that be it? That's some of the questions that at least I have that I, I wonder about and um, might be helpful for us to think about, well, what's Jesus really trying to get at? One of the things that's really important about the gospel that we may not think about right off the bat is in Jesus' land in Israel, it was really a very strong expectation that if somebody knocked on your door needing food, whether you knew them or not, you had an obligation to provide food for them. It's called hospitality, right? People know what hospitality is, right? So one of the things Jesus is telling his disciples as he's sending them out to go and preach the good news is he's saying, don't worry because God will provide. God will move the hearts of those people, at least some of them, that you go to and they will make sure that you don't starve to death, that you have a place to stay, et cetera, et cetera. And I want you to trust in that because if you don't trust in that, they might get the wrong idea of why you're coming. If somebody comes and that's the only thing they have to offer is, I have, some, I have this great news to tell you, and they're not asking for any money, they're not asking for anything, they're just going to say, I, I just want to share this good news with you, that would make an impression. They'd be like, wow, he's not in it for himself, apparently. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a listen. I think that's something that we need to keep in mind. And, and uh, one thing that we probably might think off, off, right off the bat is, well, thank God he's not going to call on me to do that. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. Does anybody like, when you go on vacation, do you, does anybody like say, well, I, what, what is it that you take with you, that you say, I'm, I don't care what else happens, I'm taking this with me? Vivi, what's one thing that you absolutely will take on vacation with you. Clothes. clothes. Not just one set, right? But like clothes, for, enough clothes for the whole time, right? What else is something that you'd say, there's no way I'm leaving this at home? Electronics. Electronics, like, like an Xbox, I mean? Phone. Who would without a doubt, take a phone on vacation. And if your mom or dad said, just leave that there, you don't need that, you, we can, you can get by with a phone for two weeks, how would you feel? Be like, no way, mom, right? So we have an idea about uh, what it feels like to have to do without something. And Jesus is telling the disciples, just don't worry about that walking stick. Don't worry about money in your, in your money belt. That's how they carry their money. What else did he... Traveling bag. Don't worry about a traveling bag. All that stuff, just don't worry about any of it. Because this is the one thing I want you to focus on. I just want you to focus on telling people the good news. And everything else will take care of itself. Wow, that's a challenge. You know, that's what I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be doing that, and I find it quite challenging. Whenever, like, when I go on vacation, or when I go anywhere, even if I'm just going for two days, it's very hard for me to leave, leave my iPad at home. It's just like, it just, like, kills me. I just hate that. But that's really, that's how serious God is about sharing the good news with other people. He's dead serious about it. So what are we gonna do? If we can't go the full, the whole way that Jesus is saying to his disciples, what can we do? 
Give me some ideas. It doesn't have to be a fifth grader. Eighth graders, you have a chance to redeem yourselves, so if you've got an idea, be sure and speak up. They've been, they're, they got a corner on the market up here. Yes? What's that? Spend time with your family. Yeah, sure. That's what they're kind of counting on on vacation, isn't it? But how about sharing good news with people? Well, I think one of the things that we do is, okay, not everybody is going to be called by Jesus to do what he's talking about in the gospel today. That's one of the gifts of the Spirit, but there's other gifts, right? So if it's not the gift that he's giving to us, then, well, we don't have to do that. But we do have to keep paying attention to the people who do have that gift, who have been called by God to really let go of everything and just give themselves totally to proclaiming the good news because they're going to need help, right? When they knock on the door, there has to be somebody on the other side of the door to open it up and say, sure, we can help you out. And there are a lot of people that that would be primarily their job, is to make sure that there's hospitality given to those who, who are um, given that commission by God to focus primarily on proclaiming the good news. Missionaries are a good example. But... That's not the whole story. Because there are situations that, you're, that you can find yourself in already that you could go ahead and proclaim good news. You believe that? Right there in your own spot in life? Can you think of any occasion ever that you've had a chance just to be someone who offers a kind word, for example, or maybe a reminder of how God is. Could be maybe like somebody just, maybe they lost their dog or something and you just have to console them and say, God loves even dogs. So we don't have to worry about what happens to dogs because we know that God loves dogs too. And that might be, that might be just the thing that they need to hear right then. So even if you're not the one going out without the walking stick or the traveling bag or the electronics or whatever, keep your eyes open. Because it could happen right where you're at that you recognize an opportunity to be the one who proclaims the good news to somebody that needs to hear it. Okay, let's stand and make our prayers of the faithful together. We pray for world leaders that they will be guided by Christ to make decisions that are for the good of society. We pray to the Lord. For the victims and families of recent tragedies throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For people who are going through a difficult time, may they feel the presence of God in their lives and know that God does not leave them, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and suffering, may they have healing and feel God's loving embrace, we pray to the Lord. For Ed and Dorothy Wren, who now rest in eternity with the Lord, we pray to the Lord. And for our own special intentions, 
that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the many ways that you share your life with us and invite us to share your life with others. We pray that we might always be willing to do so when we see the opportunity. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create in blessed Padre Pio the new man in your image, the old having passed away, Graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
You did a good job of providing hospitality when I had questions and then you thought about it and gave answers, so thanks a lot for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>